Hello and welcome to this video tutorial covering form controls. This is the first of three videos we're going to have to demonstrate some of the things you can do with forms. Today we're going to be talking about text, text area, submit, and reset input controls. Okay, So if we look at this form, you can see we have a name field, right? a nickname field, and those are inputs, and they're typically referred to as text inputs. Then we have this comments one down here. Notice it's a little bit different in size. This we call a text area. It's actually made for you know uh, more than one line, unlike these up here, which are you know expecting you know a, a word, a few words, maybe a short sentence, but not much. Only one line, okay? And then we have a submit button. That's going to submit the form to the server, to the web server, and take this data that we eventually fill in here and do something with it. And then we have a reset button, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little while. So let's take a look at the markup here, the HTML markup, and let's look for, ah, here it is, I have it right here. This input field right here, type equals text, name equals full name, ID full name, title, and that's it. By by default, these these text boxes here, right, are 20 characters wide. 20 characters wide by default. So if I want to change the size, right, the size of the text box, right, I will now just go preview and notice now that this particular field is now 40 characters wide, 40 characters wide, okay? So the next thing I want to do is let's say you want to set a maximum length, right? You want to set a maximum length to your field. So no one can enter more than 35, right? More than 35 characters. So now I'm going to set max length here equal to 35. And if I go here and I preview and I enter characters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And if I try to enter more, it stops. It stops. See? It's not allowing me to enter any more characters, okay? So it's actually stopping at 35, which is the max length, okay? And that's great. If you want a zip code that's only four, you know, four digits, max length is your friend. The other thing uh, I'm going to talk about, but I'm not going to, well, I'll show you, is tab index. Tab index is extremely important, not only for a great user experience, but so people who are visually impaired may be using screen readers, right? So that their screen reader will jump to the appropriate field as identified by you, the web form developer. And there's where you can go in and add another attribute and value, right? You can say tab index equals, right? And then you can say one, right? You can say tab index equals one. And that's going to ensure that the 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 tabbing that when you tab in it's going to go to that particular field right this is number one and if you say tab index two for the next field that's how that works okay um, the other thing that I want to show you and just note that this is not going to work on all browsers okay it doesn't work in Apple Safari it does work in Chrome and Firefox and that is let's say you want to make a particular field required Okay, and before somebody, well, when somebody clicks on that submit button, you want to ensure that all the fields that you marked uh, with required are in fact uh, there and they have data, they have text inside of them. So if I went down, say, to this nickname field, and I, if I wanted to make nickname required, I can just enter the word required uh, as as uh, as part of this input field. Um, tag here, okay? And notice input is a self-closing tag. By the way, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to show show you that, okay? 
Actually, I highlighted this. This is incorrect. It's supposed. To, this is the end here of the input field. My mistake. That's the actual end of the break tag, which is another self-closing tag. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to show you is the text area, right? This is the text area here. And notice if I type in um, this is um, my feedback for your great products. Notice how it wrapped, right? Notice, notice how it wrapped around. Now you can control as a web developer how many rows and columns right how many rows down and how many columns wide your particular text area should be so if i want to go in here okay and i want to where's my text area where is my text area click to respond you know sometimes it's hard to find things right oh here it is text area right so let's change Let's change this to rows equal 5. Rows equal 5. And if I preview this now, notice it got it got longer here, right? We have more rows to type, right? There's one row, there's two rows, three, four, five. Five rows of information we can type in if need be, or our user can, right? The other thing is notice how narrow this is, right? Okay, notice uh, it, it, it's set to the default number of columns. Now, if I want to make the number of columns 50, right, I would add another attribute, right? I would add another attribute called calls, C-O-L-S equals, and if we say 50, and I preview here, notice now we have something that, you know, a little, little more aesthetically pleasing to the person who's going to be using our form, right? We're not squishing up, you know, a small area for them to type in, okay? The next thing, uh, again, is the submit button. Now, what's it going to submit to when we click this? What's going to happen? If we go back and look at our markup right here, notice there is a form tag right here, and all of our all of our fields and such are defined inside of the opening and closing form control. But here's this attribute, this attribute action, OK? It's saying, when somebody submits this form, here's the action, the URL that I want you to post, right? Here's method equals post. That's saying, submit the data that's on that form to this particular web page. Now, this particular web page happens to be a PHP script. That's why you see this PHP, this PHP right at the end there. Okay. So if I go and preview this form and I type my name, right, uh, and I type my name, and I don't have any particular uh, comments, and I hit submit, it's going to submit it to the web server, and this this form here that you see, this page actually, not a form, this page echoes back to me each of the fields, right, and the values that I typed into each field. Okay, notice I didn't type anything into the comments field. And when w you're working on your final project, this is the page you're going to use to ensure that the data, right, the, the field data that was asked for in the final project specifications is actually showing up on the server, right? On the CTEC server in the form that we, right, the instructors expect it to be. Okay, and I can click on go back. Actually, this doesn't work with my particular thing here, but that would bring you back if you were in a normal browser. Okay? The other thing I spoke of before, right, and by the way, the submit button, the submit button is right. Where are you? Here it is. Input type equals submit. Again, another self-closing tag. And that, again, is going to post the form right to the action specified in the uh, at value here, the, f the action attribute value. And it's going to use what we call method post to do that. The other thing that I showed you before was this, or I spoke of, and I said I was going to talk about it later, and that's now, is this input type equals reset. And what this is going to do, and I'm sure you've seen this type of functionality on a web page, is if I say, um, all right, let me go back. I start typing data into the field here. Uh, and then uh, I type in my nickname. 
And then I'm typing away, and then my phone rings, and I, I just start typing gibberish. I screwed up, okay? And I come back to the forum, and I say, ah, you know something? Let me just start over. So I can click on the reset button, and all the forum data is cleared out, okay? So that's part one on form controls, okay? So we talked about the text, text area, submit, and reset input controls. If you have any questions, be sure to post them in the student question forum on Canvas. Speak soon.